Welcome to our tutorial about the on error function. In one of our previous tutorials, we looked at the try catch error handling routine. This is a relatively new Visual Basic structure. The legacy or classic way to handle it is with the on error structure, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you about that. Let's start by cleaning out our code. Let's open up our rule error with a double click. So I'm declaring the variables x, y, and result as doubles on one line of code, and now I'm going to delete the two lines underneath. Let's also delete the try catch structure. By the way, the on error routine does not work together with the try catch structure, in case you were wondering about that. Now let's type on error. Go to my error. And down here, let's type my error, colon. Next line, i space equals, and let's bring in the message box function. Double click on the show snippet. Let's type in the function err, period, description. Basically, this statement tells Visual Basic what to do when an error occurs. We need to write one more line of code here. Now, if the error didn't occur, the program exits at this point. Otherwise, these two lines get executed. Let's comment out this line. And let's uncomment this line. I'm going to replace this part of the code with an input box. Let's set the default value, let's say 5. Now I'll uncomment these two lines. And let's run our program. Click OK. Let's accept the default value. OK. Here's our results. Everything seems to be fine. Let's run the rule. Let's use a text string now to create an error. Click OK. Here's our error message. Conversion from string text to type double is not valid. OK, let's improve our code a little bit more. I'm going to bring in the resume statement. What the resume statement does is this. It executes the program with a statement that causes an error. Let's run and see how it goes. So let's create an error by entering some text. Click OK. Here's the error message. Let's click OK. The program resumes with the statement where the error occurs. If we create another error, the routine will repeat itself. We'll see the message. Click OK and back to the spot where the error occurred. A problem with a situation like this is that you can potentially get yourself into an infinite loop which can cause your computer to crash. In my case, my computer didn't crash because of the input box function up here. Another variety of the resume statement is resume next. By the way, I forgot to mention the message box function here would have also prevented the script from getting stuck in an infinite loop and crashing my computer. What's going to happen with the resume next statement? The program will simply skip the line where the error occurred and it'll go to the next line. Let's run the program to see how it works. Let's type in some text and click OK. Here's my error message. Let's click OK. And the program resumes at the next line. Let's double click to open the code. 
And I'm going to add one more on error statement. Let's copy this line, right click, copy, place the cursor below and paste. This one is going to be on error. Go to my error two. I'll just copy and paste it. Colon. Let's copy this line of code now. And paste. Let's actually rearrange the code a little. I'll cut this, and I'll paste it here. Now let's run our program. First, let's enter some text to create an error message. Here it is. Click OK. And OK again. File already open. I'm going to need to change the code a little bit here. Let's comment out the resume next. Let's run it again. Create the error message with some text and click OK. We resume from the same line. Click OK, and here's our result. Click OK, and here's the second error message. OK. One more thing here. If I don't use resume or resume next after the error message, I need to use an exit sub at this point to prevent the program from running the last two lines of the code. In our next tutorial, I'm going to expand this routine using an if-else statement. And this concludes our first tutorial about the on-error routine.